When Adelina fell into a depression in her early teens, she started experimenting with drugs. But her depression didn't get any better, and after a couple of years, Adelina was already deep into the drug world. When she was 18 years old, she decided that she had had enough and decided to get help for her drug addiction. Adelina's family were relieved, thinking that Adelina was in good hands and moving on to a better path in life. That was until Adelina's mother was called into the police station and got the horrible news that her daughter had been murdered. This is the case of 18-year-old Adelina Lehtinen. <laughs> true crime cases that have occurred in the Nordic countries. Some content warnings before we start this video. This video will include talks about drug addiction, depression, and different forms of abuse and torture. So if that's something that you don't want to watch, then I suggest that you click out of this video right now. I'm so sorry that there was no new video out last week. I was sick and I just couldn't film anything. And I'm better now, but I'm still a bit sick and my voice is still pretty bad. So hopefully it doesn't sound super bad on the video and hopefully I will get through the case without any problems. I have also changed the lighting a little bit. I just wanted to try something different now before Halloween. I wanted it a bit darker, so hopefully it looks okay in the video. Anyway, let's jump straight into the case that happened in Finland. Adelina Lehtinen was an 18-year-old girl living in Oulu in Finland, and she lived a pretty normal life with its ups and downs, and when she was around two years old, her parents got divorced. I could not find any more information about her father on the internet, so it seems like she lived with her mother, and I'm not really sure what kind of contact she had with her father. But in her early teens, Adelina fell into a depression and unfortunately took a wrong turn in life as she started using drugs. According to Adelina's mother, the first time that her and Adelina had an argument about drugs was when Adelina was 14 years old, so in middle school. At that time, Adelina's mother, Taya, found suspicious medication in Adelina's pencil case and she ended up being placed outside of the home for the first time. And this was actually something that her mother wanted and the placement lasted for three months. Taya has stated that she could not keep an eye on Adelina 24-7, so she felt like it was better for her to be placed somewhere since she could not handle it herself. Later, Taya also found out that Adelina had tried amphetamine at the age of 14, which is a pretty serious drug for such a young girl. But drugs did not really become a big problem back then, and it would actually take three years before Adelina relapsed into using drugs in early 2021. After years of depression, Adelina ended up leaving school where she was studying to become a nurse for around half a year. At the time, 17-year-old Adelina had used narcotic drugs with a boy and she was also caught by the police for smoking cannabis, and cannabis is illegal in Finland. Adelina's drug use was a hard place for her mother, Taya, who had actually worked for a pretty long time in a prison, so she probably had an insight into the drug world. Adelina ended up being placed once again outside of the home, and Adelina's mother has stated that it felt like a rug was pulled from under her feet. Taya tried to support Adelina in any way possible, but drugs only became a bigger part of Adelina's life, and she even started to distance herself from her old friends, but she decided to move into her own apartment after turning 18 in fall of 2021. Even if Taya and Adelina had a bit of a rocky relationship due to Adelina's drug use, Taya still describes her relationship with Adelina as warm and loving. They would sometimes hang out and show each other openly that the other person was important to them. Whenever they were in contact, they also told each other that they were loved and this was something that was super important to Adelina. Even if Adelina had her own place, she spent a lot of time in the end of her life with Taya and Taya's partner. According to Taya, Adelina felt safe at their place and she was also not using drugs at their home. Taya has stated that at their place, Adelina was as if she was a child again. She was baking and watching a lot of TV with them. Sometimes in the evenings, she wanted to be tucked in by her mother, even if she was 18 years old, and this was also super important to her. And to me, this is just super sweet, and it's clear that her mom's place was like a safe zone for her, where she could be without drugs and just feel loved. 
Adelina was starting to get tired of her life surrounded by drugs and she was at the end of her life trying to get her life back on track. She wanted to be stable and clean from drugs and because of this she decided to try rehab. During the rehab she was first supposed to be without drugs for two weeks and this is usually something super hard. I mean, if you're addicted to drugs the withdrawal can be horrible. On Monday, the 7th of November 2022, Adelina had a treatment at a facility that her mom accompanied her to. Taya also visited Adelina three days later and brought her some stuff, her Donald Ducks, a hoodie and woolen socks. During this meeting, Adelina had also told her mom that she couldn't hug because hugging was forbidden during the treatment. Unfortunately, that was the last time that Taya would ever see her daughter, and she still remembers the last words that they said to each other. I love you. I love you too. The next day, Adelina left the treatment, apparently due to some kind of death that she had to deal with. So during the next weeks, Taya believed that Adelina was still getting her treatments and that her life was turning around. When Taya hadn't heard from Adelina for a week and a half, she called the nursing home on Adelina's birthday on the 20th of November. That's when she found out that her daughter was no longer in care, and little did she know that on Adelina's birthday, Adelina had already been laying dead on the bathroom floor in an apartment in Olu for four days. Only five days after Adelina left her treatment, she was killed, but her mother was still unaware of this for many days. Adelina's body was not found until the day after her birthday, when the apartment owner's father came to the crime scene. When the police called Taya and asked her to come to the lobby of her own workplace, she knew straight away that the news she was gonna get was not gonna be anything good. She just knew that they had nothing good to say and she had a bad feeling after not hearing from Adelina for many days. Taya had been worried for Adelina for a long time considering her drug addiction, but lately things had been going better and Adelina was on the right path. In November of 2022, in the lobby of her own workplace, Taya got the worst news that any mother could get. The policeman shook her hand completely expressionless and told her that her daughter, Adelina Lehtinen, had been found dead. But the nightmare would not end there, as Adelina had not died from a drug overdose, she had been murdered. These news of course felt completely unreal and Taya just went home and started crying. Luckily, she had the support of her partner and colleagues, but I mean, nothing can really take away that kind of pain, honestly. In the last days and months, Taya has gotten information about what Adelina actually went through before her death. Before actually dying, Adelina was tortured first in her own home and a few days later in another apartment where she ended up dying. The police suspect that before the murder, Adelina had been held in a private apartment in Olo because of an 800 euro debt. She was not able to leave this apartment, so she was basically kidnapped. There, she had been subjected to different forms of violence, her freedom had been taken away, and some of her property had been stolen. And I'm now gonna mention some of the violence that Adelina had to suffer, so just a warning, it's not gonna be easy to listen to, but I feel like it's important to mention to understand the severity of the case. Adelina's hands and feet were tied with cable ties and she was kicked in the thigh with high-heeled shoes. She was also forced to choose which leg that the perpetrators would kick, so some mental abuse was clearly going on there. Later, the cable ties were replaced by tight handcuffs, her hair had been cut and her skin had been burned with cigarettes. She had also been tortured with cold water for an hour and she was actually photographed while this was going on, which is just so humiliating. The perpetrators had stolen property from her, such as a television and her bank card. The card was then used to withdraw all of the money in Adelina's account, which was around 90 euros, and one of the accused then went to buy food with this money. After this, Adelina was taken to another private apartment where the violence continued. She had actually been kept for days in this apartment before being murdered and during this time people had been coming and going without anyone reporting anything to the police. And I hate to say this, but the violence in the other apartment actually got worse. There, Adelina was held against the wall while all of the accused abused her. 
Among other things, she had been strangled and also cut with some kind of knife. And I'm not gonna go into details about this out of respect for Adelina and her family, but I want to mention that she had also been sexually abused. Adelina had then died from suffocation after her mouth was first stuffed full of cloth and a pillowcase was pulled over her head. After that, she had been pushed inside the sofa into a locked divan box where she died on the 16th of November 2022. According to the police, the violence used had led to Adelina's death. Her body was then taken into the bathroom of the same apartment and when the police found her, medicine tablets were scattered next to her body. According to the prosecutor, drug debts were behind the torture and murder since the police searched her apartment and found a list of debt to different people. And my first thought was honestly that how can anyone be pushed inside of a divan box? I mean, they are super small, but apparently Adelina was very petite and thin as she weighed only around 40 kilograms. Anyway, it's just horrible to imagine and honestly, I don't even want to think about it. According to the prosecutor, Adelina was badly treated and assaulted by a total of seven people in less than a week, five men and two women. So for the first torture in Adelina's apartment on the 12th to 13th of November, two men and one woman were charged. They are all accused of aggravated robbery and aggravated deprivation of liberty. Adelina was killed in another apartment in Olo on the 16th of November and four other people, so not the same ones that tortured her before, three men and one woman were charged for this. In the beginning, they were all charged with manslaughter, but this later changed since Adelina's death had been raw and cruel. They are accused of murder, aggravated assault, and aggravated deprivation of liberty, and the charged men are 32, 40, and 46 years old, and the woman is also around 40. Which is just so crazy to me, I mean, these were all grown-ups and honestly not even that young adults killing an 18-year-old girl. I'm sorry, but what kind of man are you if you, as a 46-year-old man, kill an 18-year-old petite girl? That's just embarrassing, honestly. In addition to this, an 8th person is accused of protecting an offender related to the murder. Adelina's mother, Taya, has stated, and I quote, even though I have been working in a prison for a long time, I never thought that adults can torture an 18-year-old girl to death in such a cruel way. What the hell could be going on in their heads? Was it to be powerful? Who did they show their powers to, to each other? The trial is still ongoing and the defendants mainly deny their charges. For example, the four accused of murder do not admit to having committed the murder. So they are all, of course, innocent until proven guilty, and that's also why I don't take any of their names, pictures, or other details into this video. But it seems like it's pretty clear what happened in this case and who are to blame for the murder. What probably bothers me the most is that they all knew her before the murder, and they have stated that they considered her a good friend. Today, almost a year after Adelina's murder, the case is still pending in court and Taya has faced the ones accused of her daughter's murder. Taya describes now feeling anger instead of sadness and she just wants justice for her daughter and I quote, It's currently the biggest driving force. The perpetrators must be held accountable. I wouldn't have to be present at the sessions. I'm going to be because as a mother, I have to protect my daughter. She's no longer here to tell what happened. And can I just say that I think she's so strong through all of this. She describes the months following Adelina's death as a nightmare. And she also hopes that young people will become aware of the dangers regarding drugs. To her, Adelina's story is a warning to other young people that there are dangerous people who are not at all interested in a young person's life or well-being. And I quote again, As a mother and as an adult, I personally think that it's our duty as adults to protect the children and young people. She hopes that Adelina will get justice and that she can start working on her grief after that. Taya is aware that the process might take years and until then she's just taking one day at a time. This case is actually a super rare case in Finland, as 80% of Finnish murders have only one perpetrator, so for there to be 8 people involved in this is just super crazy. I personally feel like the people who sell drugs often take advantage of the people that are addicted and sometimes even push them to become more addicted, since, I mean, they basically gain money from it. 
Maybe that's what happened in this case as well, that they took advantage of Adelina's addiction and in the end nothing mattered except money. It just feels unreal to me that grown-ups can do this to a young girl and I still want to believe that it was actually not meant to be a murder and they only meant to scare her, but in the end they all just showed a complete disregard towards her life and just did not care how it ended. I mean, the sexual abuse is probably what hits me the most, they just showed no empathy towards this girl. It's kind of strange that this case has not been talked much about or spread in the media, even if Taya has stated that she wants young adults to know about this case. I completely agree with Adelina's mother that it's important that young people understand how dangerous these circles can be, and in the end it's not gonna matter if you're this small young girl, you still might have to pay with your life if things don't go as planned. But on that note, I think I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that I will see you in my next case. Goodbye, everyone.